28, Job chapter 7. Job is still speaking counterwise of Eliphaz. Is there not appointed time to man upon the earth? And there is. The Bible proves that we have a set time. Now we can adjust that time by our sins and give us early death. And that's the whole Bible study itself. We can also add to our time such as that king that God said, hey, set your house in order. You're going to die. And he repented, got right. And God says, I'm going to add 15 years. Are not his days also like the days of a hireling? That's the first time that word shows up in someone who is hired. Someone who looks at time, oh, how long am I going to be here? As a servant, earnestly desires the shadow. That's a clock watcher. The shadow would be a, would be a timepiece. The shadow, the sundial. And it's almost 5 o'clock. Almost time to go home. Almost there. We've had those days at work and we look at that clock. And As a hiring looking for the reward of his work, that's the paycheck. And our days are swift. Our days are marked in time. And in all actuality, we look forward to death. Whether we want to die or not. We get life insurance. We set our days that before I die, I'm going to do this. I have a list of things I'm going to do before I die. Remember, Job has been talking about dying. Job has been talking about, I don't want to live. I did not want to live. I don't want to live. Get it over with. So in rebuke to Eliphaz, he's saying, listen, we have a point in time. In general, yes, we do. Job just wished he was ne never born, or Job wished he had his day, had already co come and gone. So am I, Job, made to possess months of vanity. Worthlessness, emptiness, fruitlessness. And weary and nights are appointed to me. And that's life. Not all life is hunky-dory, wonderful, great. TV lies to you. You know, a television show, there's a problem within the first five minutes and throughout the television program, and at the end of the show, everything's back to normal, everything's wonderful, everything's great. That's not life. And when you read your Bible, there's things about, oh, this is great, wonderful, great story. And you get into boring things. You get into troubles. And you get into people's terrible lives. You say, what is that? That's life. That's life. You saw that with the life of Christ to his disciples. Christ would have a, such a great, hey, listen, folks, we're going to Jerusalem. They're going to crucify me. They're going to mock me. In three days, I'm going to rise again. Well, who's the greatest? What do you mean, who's the greatest? So am I. Verse 4. When I lie down, I say, when shall I rise? He goes to sleep. When's morning coming? And the night be gone. Come on, night. Hurry up. Let's get going. Come on. Toss and turn. And I am full of tossing to and fro unto the dawn of the day. I can't sleep. Oh, come on. Let's get this night. I'm going to try to fall. Come on. Get this night over with. Trying to sleep, but it ain't working. It's too hot. It's too cold. Just wish the alarm clock would go off and get to start the day. My flesh, Job, now watch this, is clothed with worms. I know there's no calm or anything. Let's stop right there. He's got worms on him. He's got boils, and Job says, I got worms. And when you look up a thing about this, this could be the guinea worm disease. And there's actual literal worms inside the body. And that's the case. The devil really went after Job. Now remember, Job is, live, is sitting in an ash heap in, in, the, in the dump. He's unclean. Even before the law. And Claude says the first time that word shows up, of dust. And when we come back over here... And verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 8, he says, He sat down among the ashes. 
He's in the dust. He's outside. He's not in a house. He's in a pile of ashes where they burnt the garbage. He's got himself a piece of broken pottery that came out of the garbage, and he's scraping himself. And either the devil or where he is, he's gotten worms added to it. And his body's all covered with dust, and he may be covered himself with dust just to get the ooze and the, and the goo in. My skin is broken. There are boils on them, they're breaking, they're pussing, they're ripping open. And I become loathsome. And when we saw that his friends came up, they couldn't even recognize him. Job is a, a pile of boils and goo and dust and worms and pus. This is not, Job is not the kind, you want to go up and give a kiss. You want to get away from him. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. And I'm going to think that's quick. Can't really find too much information. And are spent without hope. Job's main conflict of chapter 7 is life is quick. There's a set time. Life is quick. And it is. And without hope. What's it? I mean, he loves the Lord. He knows the Lord's going to redeem him. But right now, presently, where Job is, look at him. This ain't going to end, is it? Have you ever had something in your life in the past? Not not right now, but ever had something? You just, hey, this is not ever going to end. This is it. I'm going to die with this condition, wherever it is. And we know by the end of Job, that's not so. Job, we don't know about the boils, but Job's going to get his children back. He's going to get his riches back. And the Lord's taking care of us. And there are times in our ailments, our health, whatever it is, we might say, you know, is it going to get any better than this? And you haven't doubted God. You haven't not trusted in God. It's just, okay, just live like this till I die. Serve the Lord. That's where Job is. Oh, remember that my life is wind. Again, that's quick. My eye shall no more see good when he dies. Now, Job does not know, and I, I, I don't know where Job goes when he dies. I know the Jews go to Abraham's bosom. Now, if that's where the Gentiles went to, I don't know. But there are Gentiles who did write, and there'll be Gentiles that... At the Great White Stone Judgment, if their name is found in that book, they go off into eternal life. Now, where Job goes, and this is where they get that 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 uh, you know, the soul sleep. That's not the Christian. The eye of him that has seen me. Anybody has seen Job? Anybody shall see me no more. You're going to be put into a hole. You're not going to reasonably dig us up. And if you were to dig up Job's body, find it, it's not going to be Job. The body is going to be decayed. Like I saw the other day, they had the picture of uh, King Ramesses and Pharaoh of Egypt. And they did a pretty good job of, of the uh, keeping the body well preserved. But that's not how he looked when he was living. Did the guy look sorry? Thy eyes are upon me, talking to the, the, his friends, and yet, I mean, his eyes are upon me, and I am not. I am not. What, what am I? Who am I? As the cloud is consumed and vanished away, have you seen, you've watched the clouds, and next thing you know, that cloud's gone? He's referencing to life again. So he that goeth, down to the grave shall come up no more. That vanishes away. The only other place that shows up is in James 4.14. And again, <coughs> that vanish referencing is to how quick life is. Job says, you're looking at me and guess what? One day you're not going to see me no longer. And I don't know if Job is, you know, I'm going to die. 
And he doesn't. We read the other day, chapter 42. And he's really gotten off, I, I want to die. It's like, you know what? I don't need to think because life is going to be too quick anyway. He, the one who has died, shall return no more to his house. Everyone thinks, you know, the zombie apocalypse and all that. It's not going to happen, according to the Bible. Now, what about ghosts and stuff like that? Yeah, there are spirits in the Bible. And the Bible says that the soul of the saved man goes to glory. Goes to be with the Lord. And Jesus said that there's a spirit went out and he got seven other more spirits that were more wicked than her, them. I wouldn't mess in the realm of, of ghosts and all that. I do believe in them. Shall his place know him anymore? So when you die and your house is left, you're not going home no more. And eventually, within time, they'll take everything away, move everything out, someone else will move in, and be like, who's lived in this house that we're living in right now? I don't know. You can't ask the house. You can't go up to the wall. Say, who lived in this house? And there's some things in this house that we look around and we can wonder what the story was. We got a whole, uh, we got a, a plaster hole in our wall. We're like, what on earth happened there? Therefore, I will not refrain. And I watch this. I watch this. Therefore, I will not refrain my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. Seems like they're like, Joe, calm down. I, I, no, I'm going to get angry. I'm going to speak. This is what I'm getting here. And I could be wrong. I'm going to speak in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Job said, I'm complaining. He's talking to his friends and looks like his friends are trying to like, Job, just calm down. No, leave me alone. I'm going to say what I got to say. Shut up. That's the best thing to do for it. Let him get it out. Let him get it out. So is complaining wrong? It's wrong. But have you not complained in being in less, worse condition than what Job is in? Only one has not complained is God, Jesus Christ. Now, am I a sea? No. Or a whale? No. That thou settest a watch over me. Now, these are things that, you know, you got to watch. God has to watch the sea to make sure that sea does not flood. God has to control those whales. I mean, there's a lot of whales back there. So they don't do destruction. When I say, my bed shall com comfort me, my couch shall ease my complaint. I'm going to complain, but being at rest. Then thou, thou, God, then God scareth me with dreams and terrifieth terrif yeah, me through visions, nightmares. He's already been seven days and seven nights. But he's had nightmares through his life. He may have had dreams about being in this kind of condition before. And he said he's already feared this. This is his fear to have loss. I've dreamed about this. I had visions about it. Not being a prophet, it's just I did not want to say, here it is. Is God going to restrain me? So that my soul chooses, that's the first time that shows up, strangling, that's the only time that shows up, and death rather than my life. There he goes again. I want to die. I want to put my, my soul. I want to grip my soul. And I want to strangle it to death. He is not losing the sense of that pain and anguish. Time is short. He'll end. Oh, we should be right now. Job is in a predicament. I loathe, that's extreme hatred. I loathe it. I would not live always. 
You know, that statement is not that he wants to die. He says, Listen, I'm not going to be in this flesh for, etern for eternally. And he goes, Yeah, all right. We're all going to die. The wages of sin is death. Let me alone. Now, what do you get out of that? Somebody's trying to interrupt. Let me alone. For my days are vanity right now where I am. I have no children. I have no riches. I have no nothing. Probably no wife no more. M remarkable, miserable friends you are. I'm sitting out here in this dust pile. It's worthless. Shut up and leave me alone. You know what the best thing would have been for Job right now? If these three men took off and let Job have quality time with the Lord. If Job would get off alone with the Lord, something would have happened. What is man? Now he's going to a whole new thing. What is man? What am I? God, look at me. I'm suffering. Look at me. People suffer. People lose things. People die. Our life is vanity. Our life is quick. Our life is just win. What is man, God? What is man? That thou should magnify him. What are we? Why did Jesus Christ leave the throne to suffer and die that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son? Why? Listen, people want to save animals. Why didn't God give his life for the dog? Why didn't God give his life for the whales? People would have been happy. What is man? That man has rebelled against God since Adam and Eve. Genesis 3. Genesis 4, another man kills another man. And he has the nerve to say, God, am I my brother's keeper? What attitude? And Christ will come in the flesh. He will be born of Mary, who is a virgin. And the entire group of his people will not receive him. And his own 12 disciples, one of them being the devil, are going to give him the most miserable life he will have on this planet. Peter will always be questioning the word of God while Jesus is alive. No, not, not so, Lord. Peter, you're going to. What is man? You ever ask him, what is man? That thou should, God, should magnify him. And that thou, God, should set thy heart upon him. You know, Job's realized, I am nothing. And we are nothing. And that thou, God, should visit him every morning and try him every moment. Job's like, okay. This event I'm going through, God, you're with me. Here it is. And you're with me. And there's a reason why you're doing this. Why? And there are some people in sin. Some people. They are in sin. They have been involved with a crisis in their life. Because they've sinned against God. And God wants them to get right. Hebrews chapter 13. As a father chastises his son. So God the father chastises his children. Because he loves us. Has not man just kicked God in the butt throughout all the history of mankind? And yet God, every single week, God will send somebody out there. Every single day, he'll send a gospel tract somewhere that they might hear about Jesus. How long wilt thou, God, not depart from me? How long wilt thou not depart from me? Well, you just said that thou should visit man, but me, you left me. And that's not the truth. Because if God left them, God would tell the devil, go ahead and get him. Do whatever you want to him. But God has set forth restrictions because he loves Job. Nor let me alone till I swallow down my spittle at spit. God, just leave me alone, will you? Jonah was like that. Elijah 
wanted to die. And there are men in the Bible, and, and that, you know, Lord, just leave me alone. Just let me die, will you? Stop my life, will you? Is it wrong to have suicide thoughts? No. Are you going to say Job is going to go to hell? I don't think so. You think Samson is going to go to hell? No, he's mentioned in the Heroes of Faith in Hebrews 11. Don't listen to a church that, if you do this thing, you're going to go to hell. Don't let, they're going to hell. Great men in the Bible said, oh God, just end it. I've had it. You are in good company. And what did God do to them? He took care of them. He loved them. And he overlooked that little fit of anger, that little fit of loss of reality. Now watch this. I have sinned. Whoa. There's repentance. I have sinned. Is this just, you know, I'm sorry? You know, what? What shall I do unto thee? Job, and he's not going to get it right away, but he's on his way. Now, the point right now, okay, Job, uh, uh, let's get on your knees, close your eyes, and say the sinner's prayer. No, this is not the point. Job's not ready for that, but he's on that road. It's in his heart. O thou God, preserver, that's the only time that word shows up, of men. Who preserves men? God does. We do not come back as animals. We do not come back in reincarnation state. We don't go to Allah. We don't go to a Pope. God preserves men. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto Father preservation but by me. He that has the Son has everlasting life. That preserver is God. O thou, he's speaking to God, preserver of men. Jesus Christ is the preserver of men. Jesus Christ is the mediator between God and man. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who take away the sin of the world. Jesus Christ is the method for man to be saved. So when he says preserver of man, Job's talking about the Lord, and Job is talking about Jesus. Jesus is God, and God is Jesus. I am preserved to go to glory by Jesus Christ. There it is. Now Job doesn't know anything about Jesus. I do. Why hast thou set me as a mark against thee? Satan did. Because you were living right, you were doing evil, you were perfect, you loved your children, you were offering, offering to them, God was blessing you, God was taking care of you, and the devil said, let me at him. So Job is wrongly charging the Lord, and we cannot do that. We cannot say God's doing it, we cannot say the devil's doing it, we can't even blame ourselves for doing it. We gotta look at it like, well, I don't know who. I don't know. When I get the glory, I'll find out. But the prophet thing is say, I have sinned, and what can I do for you, Lord? That's the proper way. And say, listen, people say you can't question God. When you're in, when you're in a situation between you and God, whatever it be, health, whatever it is, you can ask, say, God, why is this happening to me? For what lesson do you want me to learn? Is it a chastisement? Is it something to get my attention? And we can ask God to say, God, what lesson do you want me to learn out of this? So that I am a burden to myself. I, I can't even stand myself. I'm sick of myself. This is disgusting. Why does thou, God, not Hard in my transgression. Because you really haven't come to, to the transgression and dealt with God. You just said, oh, I have sinned. And this is like a King Saul. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to do it again. And take away my iniquity. Why? Because I don't want these boils no more. That's the plea. 
God, if you forgive me of my sin, you will go cleanse me. I am so sorry. And then all these boils will go away. I'll be happy, dumpy. I'll be feeling so great. I got the prosperity gospel. No. It ain't going to work like that, Joe. And don't let any false preacher or teacher tell you otherwise. Job's at the point is, I'll say and do anything if I can be relieved from my faith. And we've all done that. There are people in foxholes. There have been people in war. God, if you get me home again, I'll be that preacher that my mama wanted me to be. God, if you get me home from this battle, I will do whatever it fill in the blank. And as soon as they come home from the battle, they forget about God and go about their life not remembering what they said. It's a foxhole religion. For now shall I sleep in the dust, death, death. Still look into that death. And thou shalt seek me in the morning, but I shall not be. Like really God's going to be like, oh, oh, Joe died. I'm so sorry. I didn't know he died. And yet when we read the story in John chapter 11, Jesus knew that Lazarus was dead, didn't he? You're not going to catch God off him. And Job's like, you know, God, I'm going to die. I'm going to throw you off guard. No, you're not. Calm down, Job. Relax. You're not going to die before God takes you. I can see God walk. Oh, he died. Oh, man. Didn't know. 